Hey guys, Dr. J here. In the previous episode, we completed World 3-2, defeated the Man Eaters, and murdered Yurt, the Silent Chief. If you wanna know why we killed him, go watch the episode. Today, we'll finish our journey in World 3. After we defeated the Man Eaters, I decided to not return to the Nexus and instead go straight to the boss room in 3-3. We're carrying a lot of souls, so if you feel uncomfortable risking them, feel free to go back to the Nexus and spend them. There are a couple of Black Phantom Mind Flares we'll need to defeat before reaching the boss room, so while extremely unlikely, there is a chance of dying and potentially losing these souls. Okay, I think we're now ready to start climbing these stairs. Let's talk about what just happened in this cutscene. The person that died while sitting on the throne was likely the Exiled King. The Yellow Robe, which is the actual Arc Demon, sensed us approaching the throne room and decided to summon a new host, since the King has become too weak. The Robe then transferred to this new Black Phantom, and the King died immediately, because he lost the only thing prolonging his life. I'm guessing he used the giant heart we destroyed in the previous episode as his life source. Maybe because he knew the Arc Demon could leave him at any point. We should be coming near the first Black Phantom Mind Flayer. Here it is. They're a bit tougher than the ones in the previous level, but are still fairly easy to kill if we use the Spiral Staircase as cover. There we go, easy. Okay, let's go back to the boss fight. As far as I know, this boss fight is unique in all of the Souls games. This is because the boss can summon an actual player to fight you. I mean, he could if we were playing online. I'm not going to go in detail how exactly to do so, since we can't do this anyway. If he can't find a player to summon, he'll use a normal Black Phantom, equipped with claws and using the homing soul arrow spell. This was the second Black Phantom Mind Flayer, so the only thing left to do is to try to kill this crystal lizard behind it. Nice, we got it! Ok, it's time to start the fight. There are many different strategies to defeat the AI Black Phantom, but I find that just YOLOing him works best for me. Oh, we actually got overburdened? That's fine, we don't need the Thief's Ring for this fight, but... Oh, it was probably the Gloom armor set, yeah. So anyway, like I said, for me the easiest way to kill him is to just keep close to him and spam Soul Rays. He'll try to dodge them, but if you just keep using them, most of them will still hit him. Ideally, you should try to corner him somewhere he won't be able to escape you. But even if you're not able to do so, just keep using the Soul Ray. The only attack you should be worried about is his homing Soul Arrow spell. When he casts it, wait a couple of seconds, then approach him and try to activate it. Then you just have to dodge it. I'm doing a pretty terrible job at that, but it's really not too difficult. I'm just being lazy here. If he attempts to hit you with his claws, don't worry about it and keep using the Soul Ray. If he manages to actually hit you, just keep spamming your spell and start moving backwards. His second attack will miss you. The claws don't do a lot of damage, so don't try to dodge his melee attacks. Well, it was a messy fight, but it's really not too difficult. And like I said before, even if you die, it will only take you a couple of minutes to challenge him again. I will go back to the Nexus now to store our items, but right after that we will return to Latria. We still need to save one more NPC and while we do so, I'll talk about the lore. Let's start with the Exiled King. 
My theory is that he was part of that secret masked society that was researching the So Arts. And that is why he was exiled by the Queen. Remember, the So Arts were banned in the past. Thank goodness. During his exile, he found the yellow robes, which were probably worn by a monk, hence the boss's name. And his So likely still lingered within them. Because of the awakening of the old one, that So was demonified and started searching for a host to use as his body. Before we continue, let's dupe the old monk So, so we can create the most powerful catalyst in the game. This boss demon so is used in the creation of a lot of things we're going to need for the Platinum Trophy, so it's imperative we dupe it. Otherwise, we'd need to kill him three more times. I'll excuse you, lucky. That's a hurry. Where are you after? The Maiden in Black being here really makes this annoying. I'm not sure if it will still work if we talk to her by accident. Thank goodness, yeah, I was. We are in danger. Okay, looks good. Let's just double check. Thank goodness, yeah, I was worried. Perfect. We can now go to Blacksmith Ed and ask him to craft the Insanity Catalyst. We'd need either a silver catalyst or a wooden catalyst. We have both, but I think I'll use the silver catalyst as a base. It doesn't matter which one we will use for the creation, but I don't want to lose the wooden catalyst, since we may use it at some point. The reason I'm saying this is because the insanity catalyst will cut our MP in half. And although it more than makes up for that by its huge increase in magic power, there may potentially be certain cases where we'd need a bigger mana pool. Let's go ahead and slot the Crescent Moongrass in place of the Nexual Binding. By the way, none of the catalysts can be upgraded, so the only way for us to get any more magic power will be by upgrading the Crisp Blade. But I don't think I'll be doing that. The Insanity Catalyst is really super powerful. Could it be a black? Nice! Let's equip it immediately! As you can see, our mana was cut in half, but that actually means that we'll probably only ever need the fresh spice, since using them we replenish our mana almost entirely. Let's try out our new catalyst on the crystal lizard here. Hmm? It's gone? Must have heard us when we were running towards the elevator. Well, whatever. Let's go back to the Nexus, finally spend our souls, and then return to 3-2. Remember, we still need that key to save the NPC in 3-1. Let's see where the Maiden in Black is. Great, she's here. I'll continue investing in magic. I'll try to reach 50 points. More than that and the diminishing returns will make it a waste. Doesn't look like we'll be able to reach it with our current souls, but we do have plenty of itemized souls. I won't be using them now, since I want to stock up on fresh spice from the former royal swife. So I want to make sure we have enough for that before increasing our levels again. Just as a reminder, we need to go back to the first tower anchoring the chain supporting the giant heart. It's pretty close to the beginning of the level, so it won't take long to reach it. Also, I just realized, I didn't really talk about the NPC we're going to save. I guess I should have went to him when we were in 3-1. If we save him now, we're not going to hear his story. So let me tell you more about him. His name is Lord Rydell. Unfortunately, he's already dead. The way we save him is by releasing his soul from the cell he's been imprisoned in. It is likely he was killed attempting to go past the big contraption firing arrows that was blocking the way to the church in 3-1. I'm saying this because that's where we found one of his rings, the clever rat's ring. From the description of this ring, we know he was called Little Alant, which means it's very likely he was the younger brother of King Alant of Boletaria. It is theorized that he married the Queen of Latria after she banished her former king. 
we know the Fu's idol was created in her image, so maybe he thought it was actually her and went to the church to save her. In fact, it is possible that he was right and the Queen So was inside the Fu's idol. In any case, after he died, his soul was imprisoned in 3-1 and the key was hidden in 3-2, making his eternal punishment all but certain. It sounds cruel, but it would make sense that the exiled king would torment the new husband of his former wife. And now it makes even more sense that Ostrava was here to study. Of course he'd come to his uncle's kingdom. Though I guess it would technically be his wife's kingdom. And that's pretty much all I wanted to say about Lord Rydell's story. It's really tragic and I hate that we can't do anything about it. Except put an end to his suffering at least. We're nearly there. We just need to go up the elevator, climb some more stairs and, well, climb even more stairs after that, I guess. Oops, completely forgot about that gargoyle. Dang, couldn't grab his soul. Nice, that was good timing with the elevator. I hear the last gargoyle here flapping his wings. Okay, well, just a bit more stairs to climb and then we'll see the plank that has appeared bridging the gap. Here it is. Again, it only appears in pure white world tendency. More precisely, we needed to kill at least the first two bosses in world 3 without dying in physical form to change the world to pure white. And here's the key to Lord Rydell's cell. After we pick it up, we will use the shard of Arkstone we got when we met Yurt. After we return to the Nexus, we'll go straight back to the World 3 Arkstone and teleport to 3-1. Actually, before we go there, let's buy another shard of Arkstone from Patches. They're quite pricey, but it takes a while until we reach Lord Rydell's cell, so I don't want to waste time running back to the Arkstone after that. Just wanted to check what other items he has for sale now. After killing our second Ark Demon, he now sells the Cat's Ring and an unlimited quantity of sticky white stuff. Lord Rydell's cell is on the second floor. Before we go there, we'll make a quick stop at the former royal's wife to stock up on fresh spice. I doubt we'll have enough soul to max out on them, so I'll probably need to pop an itemized soul. I wonder if we'll be able to one-shot the Mind Flares here, now that we have the Insanity Catalyst. With the Soul Arrow, I mean. We could have one-shot them with the Soul Ray, even with the Wooden Catalyst. Yeah, awesome! That would make them pretty easy to farm for souls and spices. Not that we are going to, but yeah. Nice, this one dropped some fresh spice. Okay, so the fresh spice cost 200 souls. We'll need about 80 of them, leaving us about 7000 souls short. That's not enough, so let's pop one more. Okay, perfect, let's buy them now. This should be good enough. Thank you. Now I can stay here for a little. We're now ready to go and free Lord Rydell. We need to go over on the other side of this wing and start going down the stairs. Now we immediately go left. This is the intermediary floor we'll need to cross and then go down the stairs to the second floor. Almost went down to the first floor. Okay, it actually didn't take as long as I thought. Lord Rydell's cell is just a bit further and to the left. Please, help me! Here he is. The blue soul form means that he's friendly. Let's talk to him now. Come on. Hmm? 
why isn't the prompt appearing? Finally. Oh, why, thank you. Thank you, kind soul. Please, take this fine piece of work. Besides, I have no use for it now. Ah, and thus begins my final, eternal rest. Unfortunately, that's all he's going to say. Okay, so the Dull Rat's Ring is the companion to the Clever Rat's Ring. It increases our defense when below 30% HP by 50%, making using the Hyper Mode a little bit safer. Though, I don't know, I think I still would prefer to use the Ring of Magical Sharpness if I'm going Hyper Mode. Anyway, there's a few more items we can collect here. In this cell we'll find the Three Cornered Hat. It is female only and the last piece of the Raggedy Robe set. We found the rest of it in World 1-1. The last thing we need to pick up here is the Venerable Sage armor set. This one is male only. These two armor sets are mainly interesting because they are worn respectively by Uriel the Witch and Sage Freik. We've nothing else to do here, so let's use the Shard of Arkstone and return to the Nexus. Let's visit Stockpile Thomas and store the items we don't need. Hello again. I'm keeping a close. You have a heart. To I should probably also repair our equipment. I'll excuse me. You'll. And I think the last thing I'll do today is pop the rest of our normal itemized souls and see how much I'll be able to improve our magic stat. Ideally, we'll reach 50. I believe we'll be able to do that. I'll probably do a jump cut since it will probably take a bit until we pop all of the souls. That was pretty good. We should have enough souls now to get our magic stat to 50. Let's also not forget to return our restoratives in their quick use slots. Okay, now let's see how many levels we can gain. Thou seeketh soul then touch. Soul of the mind, key to life's ether. Soul of the lost, withdrawn from its vessel. Perfect, we had just enough. Not that it would have been a problem if we didn't manage to get our magic to 50, but it just feels good to get this stat done. The next stat we will need to invest in is faith. We will need to get it to 20. Okay, well, we don't need to, but if we do, we'll be able to get a free, pure faint stone. Otherwise, we'd have to hope for a drop from a crystal lizard. Okay, well, we're done for today. I know today's episode was quite a bit shorter than usual, but we did quite a lot of important stuff, so I'm satisfied with our progress. I think this is a good place to end the episode. I hope you've enjoyed it, and if you did, please consider pressing the like button and subscribing to my channel. It will help me a lot and encourage me to bring more content for you guys. I'm releasing new videos daily, so hopefully I'll see you guys tomorrow, when we'll continue our journey through the world of Demon Souls.